What is going on guys, Wiser here, and I am coming to you with episode three of One Hive Labs Slay My Base Review. So that means I am here with the man himself, K Dyke. How you doing, my friend? Hey man, I'm glad to be back. How are you, man? Uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, loving this series. Uh, I think we're having a lot of fun doing this. We got a whole bunch of responses, which is awesome. Uh, but in efforts trying to keep these trim, let's just hop right into this. Let's jump over, check out Twidla from this uh, this base that was sent to us. Uh, I would say it's it's basically you know a, a maxed eight point five. Uh, just put down the uh, the expos. Uh, so you know a, a very newer town hall nine uh learning uh learning a lot because uh you know base building starts to get more and more complicated as you get closer and closer to that max nine uh kind of war weight uh so what do we see here let's just uh hop right into our checklist the queen chamber definitely uh is a bit of an issue so what do you see here cat yeah uh as we talked about before the, we started the episode this mm -hmm. queen is very centralized um there's only three spaces approximately from the queen to the clan castle and this clan castle is pretty much centralized in the base so that leaves the attacker to come from any angle you want pretty much so um anything we say in this video i just want to put it out there right now um stems pretty much from the queen being in the center like um, we're going to talk about the hawk bathing, we're going to talk about the air defenses, but everything um, basically revolves around that queen. Yep. That's why so, it's the first thing on our checklist. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's the most yeah. important part of your base. So that's why I always say, like, start building your base around your queen. I mean, if the queen isn't correct, everything is, uh, else is going to fall. Mm -hmm. ha having, said, uh, having said that, um, the queen, she's going to jump over these walls as well even this wall. Um, so focus on those th uh, three spaces around your queen. If, if there's three spaces around, I know it's not a set rule, but as long as she isn't chasing stuff, she's not jumping over. And it so would even, to it, it was, sorry to interrupt there, it would even be better if you could manage it to, if she jumped into kind of these compartments, you know, maybe it was, uh, you can't really do it with the sizing of your chamber, but say she was like tucked right into this corner here. That's, that's still better like than her jumping basically in a complete circle around. But that would right? make the base a lot better. Yeah. Uh, it, it immediately would. I mean, placing your queen in this area, maybe make it a bit wider, uh, rearranging this whole section, um, that would defend your base way better. So, yeah. um, yeah, I think that's most of the the queen. Um, yeah, it some work. yeah, it does need some work. What I do like though is this whole section. There's a lot of defenses there, so anyone like uh, some newer town on nines would try to come in from this angle uh, with the wizard towers. Um, wall breaking is very hard. I mean, there's a lot of splash de uh, damage and the small bombs over mm -hmm. there. Um, you're making the entry towards your queen very hard, which is a very good thing. I mean, it's a good thought. The three Teslas would pop and just roast some golems. Yeah, you know, especially this one. I mean, that one will only pop when a wall breaker is uh, standing next to that wall. Yeah. So the defense on your queen is very good. The thing I have against it is that having so many defenses in this area makes the rest of the base very vulnerable. So let's start with uh, talking about the rest of the base, uh, which is uh, the compartments. Uh, I've counted, there's 11 compartments in this base, so that's a very good number. Um, that's going to stop most, most uh, go wipe attacks. And um, another thing I noticed, and I haven't mentioned this before, um, all of these level 9 walls, which is good, man. I mean, focusing on walls early uh, on your town on 9 um, is, in my opinion, very important. I mean, yeah. there are main things stopping a go wipe attacker from getting uh, the three star. I'll tell you, I did not have that many Lego walls with uh, when that when I was at that stage of Town Hall Nine. Definitely, <laughs> not I was those. almost maxed out Town Hall Nine before yeah. uh, I got those. Yeah. So, good job on those. Uh, a tip about them. That's why I mentioned it. I mean. Any attacker coming from the outside, he's going to wall breaker some wall, basically, right? Unless he's got a very good jump uh, to place somewhere. So the your outer walls basically are the least valuable. Unless, in this case, you're saying like, yeah, yeah he, but true, but he has to invest three wall breakers. It's a valid point, um, but still I would advise to get those level 9 walls, your strongest walls, into the core of the base. Um, the reason being 
is that if once they're in and they fail a jump or they the jump runs out jump even, fades, or, yeah. Yep, yeah, they happens. fail the earthquake, so anything along those lines, that means they're stalled forever on those walls. Mm-hmm. I mean, way longer. I mean, it's almost a 50% increase from a level 8 to a level 9 wall. It's, it's along those lines. It's insane. Another point I'd make about that, you know, the, um, the mindset of, yeah, okay, I get it. You need to bring, you can bust a, a skull wall with two wall breakers. You need three for a Lego wall. But when you're thinking of Town Hall 9 base building long term, it, it's the same idea as, you know, using a a three-star strat versus a two-star strat to attack with, right? Yeah, you know what? You can bully a Town Hall like 8.5 with a go wipe sometimes. It sometimes gets you a three-star, but teaching those values doesn't help you long-term because once you get to, you know, once you're progressing past Lego walls to lava wall, it's the same amount. So you're going to want your lava walls on the inside, not your, you know, not your Lego walls. So you got to just think long-term about base building. You want to start developing those principles now. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, enough talk about that. Uh, good compartments overall. Uh, we talked about the earthquakes. Uh, we haven't yet, I mean. Um, this wall over here, it's nine spaces, so you can't earthquake all the way. This wall over here, I counted as well. It's nine spaces. You're not going to earthquake it. Um, it's not possible to earthquake this session uh, as well. I mean, there's still the same nine spaces. So, the compartment spacing is very good, actually. Um, the only wall I'd see that probably is earthquake ball is this one, but what is the actual value of uh, quaking that? So I'm a fan of those uh, compartments. So great job there. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on towards the hawk pathing and uh, everything uh, compared. To, uh, I mean, in that area. Yeah. Um, let's start with the uh, giant bombs. There's two sets in this base. They're away from the queen, um, so that's a good thing. Um, the queen, in my opinion, isn't far away enough still. I mean, but imagine her being over there. Uh, even if she would be uh, down at the south, um, I believe these two sets are too close together. I mean, there's two ways uh, you can approach these uh, double bomb sets. Uh, the first, uh, I mean, the most important one is the queen walk. I mean, a queen walk would get all of these defenses. I mean, she can step into this knock and take out the cannon. Yeah. She needs a big funnel uh, over there, but that's doable. I mean, invest a giant, that's fine. I walk her down, and all of the giant bombs are eliminated. Yeah, and there is an army camp right at 12 too, right? So. <laughs> yeah, that might be the spot to funnel, actually. Yeah. The risk is this uh, elixir storage, but if you funnel uh, these collectors uh, and one at the top, uh, I think she would go down still. Or yeah. maybe even walk her up. I mean, it's fine. If you could get her to target that elixir storage before the dark barracks went down, I think she's fine. Probably, yeah. You know I mean? But it, it takes some figuring out. Yeah, but, uh, the value it. is immense. So yeah, it's just way too large, and there's yeah, just it's it, too large. There's just not generally. There's just not enough protection for them. I mean, no. There's so many ways you could just take out that wizard tower. Um. <laughs> yeah, the, what we talked about is three hogs on this one. I mean, send in three hogs there, and they will path over, get the CC lure. Get a skeleton and, trap. And get the skeleton trap. Yeah. So just three hogs for two giant bombs is already worth it, let alone taking out, uh, I mean, a wizard tower and the sea sealer and the skeleton trap. Yeah. So that this set really needs to move. Uh, what I was thinking is maybe move it over here. I mean, in the general area there. Uh, if you still want to, to have two sets, that is. Um, with the queen down there, both sets are quite far away from the queen, quite far separated. So you're forcing difficult decisions if you do. So that's uh, basically the yeah. idea. Behind the other it. thing I like about using that chamber is it's way more protected. Like it's an it's an inner chamber. It's not one of your outer chambers that is just way too easily accessible. Because even even this one over here, how many hogs would it take to get through the archer tower and cannon? Five tops. You know, Probably you need four and a giant. Yeah. Or in a giant for sure would. So, you know, just, just not, you're not forcing enough investment to disable your double giant bombs. And then again, going back to the issue with the queen, well, you know, one jump after the double giant bomb gets you access to it, right? So, so that's a huge, huge uh, issue with this base. That's really what yeah. this all stems from. The reason being is that she jumps over. Yeah. Yeah. So if the queen is down here, you're still forcing a second jump. And that's the the reason for her having to be down there. 
Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so moving on towards the spring, spring traps. traps. Yep. Um, let me just point them out. Every single one is in between defenses, is in the path of Hawks even. I mean, uh, the one at uh, 6 o'clock is uh, kind of sketchy, it seems, somehow. But when you check the hog pathing, the one line I just drew is pretty much the only line where they might not trigger perfectly. I mean, every on other angle, um, I believe it's going to trip yeah. two or three every single time. I still so, like it. I still like it. It's a yeah. good one. So very good job on those. I mean, yeah, really every, good job. Every spring. Every spring is good here, I think. Yeah. I like it. The only thing I would still suggest is, I mean, if you're still coming from that angle, you're taking uh, probably out, uh, taking out that mortar, taking two springs out here, um, and probably taking out that mortar as well. Yeah. It's kind of iffy if you will get that one, but that's uh, three springs. So try to move. I mean, it's getting very tough at this point to uh, <laughs> place your springs, but if you can get them away from your giant bombs or place a maximum of two around them, um, that's preferred. In this case, yeah. you get three. It's a close call. They're good. Although that's I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of. I, I do this quite often actually with the sweeper because of the two spaces of the sweeper in between defenses. I like that spring setup. I just don't like where that is. You need to you need to exaggerate this. Uh, you need to exaggerate the bomb a little more because anything um, you know coming in from uh, from this section is is not going to path across to that cannon. You know, same, no, I was. I forgot to there, mention so. that when uh, yeah. mentioning the sets. Um, if you have this path um, and your hogs are standing right on the edge, uh, let me remove it, like right over here. Um, this cannon is one, two, three spaces away. This expo over here is only one space away. So, and even this air defense over here, I mean, that's one, two three spaces away so if the expo even is down there's a high chance they will split up between the air defense and the gun it would just depend on, it would completely depend on how the hogs are wrapped around the air sweeper exactly and, and that you don't want to bank on that and the same story goes from the other side the expo is closest and then the air defense and cannon are pretty much equally uh, far away yeah yeah so um, what I would recommend is together with moving the queen down, uh, change up this compartment to make this set cleaner. Yeah. Basically. Um, I think that's most of the hawks, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. I like it. Good spring traps. Just, uh, again, gonna you're going to need some readjusting uh, of, of everything as you kind of fix the queen chamber because it's going to cause other things. But uh, overall, I can tell you have a really this guy has a really good idea of what yep. good, good springs are. Definitely. I mean, look at this uh, section at the bottom. Let me switch to a circle. This is forcing a heal right there. Oh yeah. I mean, there's not even point defenses there, but it's for. Uh, I mean, the Tesla's obviously, but uh, not everyone will expect to uh, have to use a heal there. And then once again over here, there's so many point defenses there. You might be able to cover most of them, like this. But still, it's pretty tough to place, and it can trip, uh, trip up a lot of people. So, mm. nice job there. And let's move on straight to the Loon defense. Um, the same compartment. I love it versus uh, air defense. I mean, the air defenses are very far away from it. Um, every single one of these wizard towers um, is not targeting a lava hound uh, when attacking from the air. And there's also the Teslas in between. I mean, yeah. Loons are gonna die. Yeah, <laughs> They're gonna die quickly. Real so quick. even if someone you has path, to have a very good plan. Even if you pad that lava hound over top, I don't think. I don't think the loons. You have to drop a lot of loons and know the Teslas were there to yeah, to take it down. Immediately drop a rage yeah. and target the loons like this. I, and I, even I, then, if you drop a, a lava hound over here, I mean, where where is it gonna go? Which one of the three air defenses? Yeah, you you tell me. Yeah, you have no idea. I mean, you have no unless, idea. Unless you came in and took care of those three air defenses, which is uh, probably something we're going to talk about in one second, because um, those are all in a row, right? So, but but even still, if that one was remaining and it went there, it's going to be out of that stuff's range before it's dead. So it's going to be tough. Yeah. And uh, so that's why I would recommend even placing the red bombs there. I mean, if one mm. of the uh, is if just only one red bomb in one of those sections areas would. Uh, trigger 
on loons. I mean, everything is melted instantly. I'm probably not even a single defense would go down if if a lava does not path over. Yeah. So I would recommend uh, bringing up down at least two of those uh, red bombs. Um, protect your uh, yeah, well, Tesla Hill basically. Um, so moving on towards the air defenses, um, as Wise said, I mean. They're all in range of each other, and in this case, the queen jumps over. So you only have to basically uh, get into this compartment, and you can you even can get the fourth one. It's yeah. a bit tough to do. I mean, you can't count on it, but uh, from this one compartment, all of the air defenses are accessible, and the queen is accessible. And that's a major, major flaw in this space. Like a stone entry with high-level heroes would just smash that core. True, and but then again, this base would not have to defend against high heroes. No, yes, no, I'm just I would saying, consider like, coming in stoned. Yes, again, absolutely. The, again, the thinking of long term base building, right? Like, definitely. Um, uh, yep. That that to me would be an issue. Even even some Valks in there, um, but again, all stemming from the centralized queen, because I don't think many people would even consider that entry uh, if the queen did not jump into that court. Definitely, um, it's a good idea still to do it. I mean. Uh, you'd have to wall breaker in at the first layer, jump and jump. Don't but I've seen that. people do this. I've seen people do this and actually come in stoned, maybe even bring extra witches even, which in this case would not be a good idea. But um, yeah, the value is so high that you can just basically take out, uh, let's say, this section of the base and only need one lava hound, two lava hound, and a couple of loons to finish the job. Yeah. Then again, this section is going to cause trouble, but I think you can overcome it because you can directly target it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, a lot of, again, just consider this. Once you start rebuilding your queen chamber, these things are going to get, you know, be less problematic as you kind of, as you, as you shift the fences around. So, Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is the sweepers. Um, first of all, they're targeting the air defenses quite nicely. But I want to ask a question. What is the thing you want to defend against a La Luna attacks, uh, and that is on top of your air defenses? What do you actually want to protect your air defenses from, I should say? Yeah. Is that the Lava Hounds or is it the Loons? Probably the Loons. My In my guess. opinion, it's the loons because um, the lava hounds. I mean, the longer they're on top of it, they're gonna burst at some point. I mean, it might take a while, but they will. And the loons are the things that actually destroy the air defenses. Yeah. So. Even though in this case, I mean, great job. They're pointed well. I mean, they're defending most of the base. Um, but I prefer um, having one maybe over here, for example. I mean, it's a bit of of an odd spot, but. Just consider it being like this. I mean, your loon trap would be defended by an air sweeper, and if the lava hound were actually to path past it, uh, the air sweeper suddenly targets only loons. See what I mean? Yeah. So uh, that's just an idea, but try to implement this in a base and see how it works. Um, I believe it can defend a lot of rage, actually. Absolutely. Good, a well placed sweeper. A lot of a lot of guys don't fully plan for sweepers uh, at times, right? Like you'll kind of look at the direction it faces and maybe plan your attack to come in from the backside of a sweeper. But um, something is kind of a little and tricky like that. You know, a lot of guys might not look for it, and it could, it could save your base. Up. Yeah, it just messes people up. And the awesome thing about it is that if you have one sweeper placed like that, where it defends a lot of loons and uh, defends your loon trap. Um, usually um, the base is that well defended that the second sweeper you're free to do uh, with it whatever uh, I mean do what with it whatever you want yeah. so um, imagine this one being the second sweeper you could for example point it this way and prevent the queen walk yeah at least it's just an idea but consider it for sure anything else you want to add to that uh, no I, mean, I don't think so Good job on the doubling up on the black bombs. So that's very nice. Um, one thing one I of mentioned is gonna die. So. One thing I mentioned is um, there is only one sweeper that's uh, queen walkable actually as well. And we had talked before about there's just the only one that is walkable doesn't have a lot of value down there. I mean, other than those black mines being there. 
Um, but obviously an attacker is not going to know that. Uh, it's fairly well defended with uh, that storage and that storage in there. Um, I don't see a lot of guys charging in from that direction anyways. No, there's not enough value there. So I think it's uh, well enough protected unless someone is crazy enough to quake this section and uh, come in heavy from that area, which is actually something you should consider. Yeah. <laughs> these days, these days, that's uh, that's not very uncommon, we'll just say. No, you could uh, queen charge this or come in uh, like with a max attack from this angle, actually. Yeah. Uh, I think that people would do it. But then again, um, if the queen is moved down here, it's not as viable of an option because this is nine spaces and you won't get both the queen and this air defense. Well, you might, but it's tricky. So yeah, that'd be, that'd be a long shot. Yeah, definitely. So you don't have to consider it that much overall. I think it's a uh, yeah, pretty good. The positioning of the air defenses is good. Yeah, for Let's sure. Say that. Yeah, cool. So what's next? Um, the next thing would be the queen walks, queen charges, stuff like that, and CC uh, stuff. Yeah. But as we talked about, the queen walk up here is the most uh, valuable thing mm -hmm. um, because it gets all of the giant bombs. Even if those two bombs I just mentioned are over here, I believe this walk is still very valuable, um, and you I would still opt for it. You know what I just noticed as well? <clears throat> if you're standing in this compartment, uh, oh, I guess not. You you wouldn't get this one, but you can get you know you'll you'll your queen will easily I think get those three, yeah, and the CC right um, most likely yes. So so that would allow for dragons to come in this area mm -hmm. with a rage on top of this. Um, so in that case, I would consider, uh, especially from this air defense, and move one of those black mines uh, either there or here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Very well spotted. Um, okay. What, what was it? What was the next one? Oh, so the queen charges. Um, it, it, I think just the whole base needs a redesign. Uh, yep. the, there's just too many valuable targets, uh, available for not, for not a lot of cost. I believe so. So overall, good job on the base. Let me first point out that, I mean, um, for early tunnel nine, like you are, this is a very good base. I mean, sure. definitely. So keep it up, man. Uh, you're showing a lot of potential. I mean, the loon trap is very well placed. The spring traps are very good. Mm -hmm. uh, doubling up on the mines, uh, having it earthquake proof. Those are a lot of things that a lot of new play Tunnel 9 players do not even know about. Absolutely. So, great job. Keep it up. Beautiful. All right, so moving on. Yep. I'm All right. Next. Up. Activating the next base. All right. There we go. So this is one, again, a very new town hall. Uh, I don't think this guy has X post. So this is a pure 8.5 here. I, I want to show a couple lower, um, lower town hall nines. Uh, you know, we're going to, we're, we're hopefully going to show a lot of variety uh, here, guys. So, so it's more of our 8.5 sort of special, I guess we'll just say. Um, but start her off, right? What, uh, how's this queen looking? The queen, um, she's pretty safe. I mean, there's almost all the way around. There's a double wall set. She's not going to jump outside. Uh, she is going to jump in, and that's a major issue because there's uh, two uh, giant bombs there. Yep. So that's the first thing I uh, see in this base. Um, and also, um, well, we'll touch on, touch on that later. Mm -hmm. uh, so th that's the main issue I see. I mean, because she jumps into the core, um, anything except for pretty much this angle, like anywhere from the top, you can come in and get the, to the queen. Yeah. Because you can get into the core. Yeah. So that's an issue. Um, let's just assume this wall's over here for the rest of this uh, video. I mean, it's misplaced. It happens. Probably happened uh, during the screenshot. So uh, if you see this and you have it activated like this, uh, move it. <laughs> the little piece <laughs> but, of wall there. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the issue I usually have with um, this style of having a queen chamber is uh, for only two wall pieces you can or maybe three wall pieces you can have it all the way out there and not accessible by a enemy queen walk i mean a queen walk from example over here walking down that will get your queen with a rage and can just walk on and your kill squad is free to do whatever now in the same respect if you did that you'd 
be able to move your queen up, you know, somewhere around there, and then she wouldn't be jumping into that core. Yeah, that, so in this case, thing. yeah, so in this case, I would actually uh, recommend um, even removing these walls, as we talked about before. Uh, try to be as efficient as possible with your uh, queen chambers. And if you had this wall all the way out there, you could move your queen in there. She wouldn't jump in anymore. She wouldn't get easily targeted from the outside. Uh, you would have to protect her more, though. So keep that yeah. in mind. Um, but yeah, that would make it a lot harder to, to get to her. Um, so that's about it for the queen chamber, I think. Uh, the yeah. only th other thing I see is this storage. Once that storage is targeted by even an enemy queen, uh, your queen will have engaged. So the value of that storage isn't that high. I'd say move it out. Um, I mean, even over here, it would be more valuable, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. So about the compartments. Uh, I see a lot of compartments. I don't think it's necessary yeah. to count them. No, it's good. fine. Good job. Um, the only thing I wanted to look at is earthquakes. Are there any valuable earthquakes I see? Uh, this is nine spaces. So you can't earthquake that, so that's very nice. Um, this might be a valuable earthquake, though, because you can break her in here, uh, walk all the way across, and get those giant bombs. Yeah. So that's a weakness, in my opinion. Um, any other angles you see? Uh, well... No. Let's I mean, assume the queen doesn't jump in here, uh, because if she does, this earthquake becomes very valuable as well. That's what I was just going to say, yeah. So, um, if we assume she isn't jumping in, um, this earthquake isn't that valuable, but if, it, if she is, then this is a major flaw in the base. Yeah. So, once again, move the queen, and she'll be fine. And then you'll just have to move this wall... Uh, up a little bit. I mean, you, you're going to have to play with that top section of base uh, once, even yeah. once you move the queen, I think. Definitely. And the thing is, like, if you move out all of these walls and remove this section, both of those sections, it, you'll have enough spare walls to close this off, for example, or uh, fix those core issues. So that's why I say make your queen chamber as efficient as possible. And uh, yeah, that will defend a lot more things. Yeah. So next thing, the giant bombs, as we talked about, this earthquake or even a jump there would get three giant bombs, which is an issue. Uh, this entry will get four even. Um, so in my opinion, you have to spread them out more. I mean, it's nice to have a core DGB. I mean, the pathing, I believe, is correct. Let's check it. Um, from this angle, they will probably split might trigger this bomb. I'm yeah. not too sure. But then again, um, it forces the attacker to have this mortar down because if not, they will move down and then move here Which is and perfect. move around yeah. here. So that's perfect. So don't worry too much about it. Um, from any other angle, the top side is actually quite nice. Um, from the wizard tower, they will first move out to actually move away from the set. So that might be an issue. But then again, um, the timing is pretty hard to do. I think if this Tesla was over here, everything would be a lot nicer because uh, the Hawks would path through the Tesla first and then towards the air defense it gets sucked in. Yeah. Absolutely. So move that Tesla just a little bit and it becomes a perfect double bomb set. Yeah, yeah definitely. For sure. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, if, if you have a giant bomb over here, for example, I know it's queen walkable. But just consider it. Um, I mean, if this bomb or this bomb is gone, um, th it basically forces a heal over there mm -hmm. and making the raid a lot harder. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one thing, I mean, I, I've, I've maybe toyed with this. I don't make a lot of single, I, mean, I usually make two DGB bases. But this, let's pretend the, the queen and earthquake issues are fixed. You're forcing a heal, and then they're going to jump into a DGB. So that's not necessarily, I don't think, a, a poor tactic. It's it's everything else combined with it that makes it not work in this case, I think. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on towards the springs. Um, this one is the first over. Uh, I see over there at 3 o'clock. Um, it's in between the defenses. And in this case, like 
um, from this angle, they will path over perfectly. Um, but coming from the cannon, I believe they will barely touch it, if at all. Mm -hmm. So that's a bit of an issue I see with it. Um, yeah. The other springs, pretty much all of them, have one space. I mean, this one over here, what's it defending from this angle? I mean, if they come in uh, from that way, I don't think they're going to spring hogs. If they come from the arch tower cannon, I don't think it will ever pop. So focus on those spring traps. Put them in between defenses. Even here, there's a space in between. There's a wall in between here. Uh, there's a wall in between here as well. Yeah. Um, play some dead smack in the center between two defenses and leave no open spaces. Yeah. I mean, if the hawks come in from this angle, towards the air, from the air defense towards the archer tower, they will not trigger. Unless it's a big group, of course. Um, yeah, I highly... Else? I, I was just going to say, I highly recommend that uh, this guy uh, goes back and watches our hog pathing episode uh, because that really, really goes into detail about um, what is wrong with uh, uh, most of your springs here. Yes, definitely. Um, so the next topic is the air defenses. Um, this one is tucked very nicely away. I mean, there's no way an enemy queen without breaking in is going to get it. Uh, this sweeper is actually quite interesting. I mean, it prevents the queen walk from this area and up. Um, the other defense is just like the last base. It's pretty much straight in line. Uh, mm -hmm. You could consider um, jumping this or quaking that uh, without touching this wall and uh, coming in stoned from this angle. Once again, um, that has to do with the queen issue. Yeah. So if that's fixed, it becomes a lot harder and most people would not consider it. Yeah, but I mean, then just, it, just straight max attack right there and you're yeah. you're going to get way too much. And that's why in this case, I would recommend this air defense to be moved over here and this one to be moved further out as well with outside, out of queen range. Keep that in mind. I mean, uh, she cannot stand here and hit it. That's kind of important. Uh, but if you move them out further... You prevent uh, this max attack in this section. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. No problem. Um, mm. So uh, the last thing I see, and that's the reason why I'm saying try to move out these air defenses, is if you were to come in stone from the queen angle, um, you'd get these two. There are some people, uh, I'm not naming names, Sir <laughs> Chifalo, um, that would do it. Even cold-blooded. Yeah. So... They have to move. They have to move at least in uh, in some way. Um, what I do like um, is this wiz wizard tower for now. It's uh, it's probably close to the air defenses range. It's right on the edge. It's right on the edge. So you might mm -hmm. even want to move it out even further. And the other ones are in range of the air defenses. Um, yeah. So try to move them away from the air defenses. Just like uh, last base we showed, try to implement a loon trap. It's going to help you so much in defending uh, air attacks. Yeah. Um, about the traps, uh, air defense-wise, um, this one's next to the queen. I like it. I mean, it prevents the dragon swap, basically. Um, but having a red bomb right beside it, I mean, what's the red bomb going to do? If you were to send a loon first to trigger the black mine... I believe the red bomb would trigger also. Uh, with dragons, a red bomb doesn't do too much. So I would move at least that one. Yeah. Um, and move it towards a, a loon trap, basically. I was going to say uh, the three o'clock, you know, somewhere in there. Yes. Even, uh, even in front of this archer tower up top there at 12, potentially. Yep. <clears throat> this black mine over here, I'm not too sure what it's doing there. Um, the the idea of having two black mice next to air defenses is to pop that lava hound instantly. The, your main damage source towards lava hounds is those black mines. Um, if you can get the lava hound to pop quickly, as we talked about uh, before, the loons are there. Um, there's a high chance the air attack will fail. So try to focus on popping those hounds early, and um, having a trap for the loons elsewhere. So yeah. that's the main goals in defending air defenses. As a general rule, when I'm placing black mines, I just try and pick, I try and envision the least too likely air defense to go down onto a kill squad. And where I place them, I try and think of what angle a lava hound is going to come in from. Uh, 
and then just just plop them down you know right beside an air defense yep. like like right in the middle like right right there would be perfectly okay absolutely that that's the first uh, air defense i was looking at to place yeah. them I, w I would place all the uh, i mean two black mines there um it's just a tip I mean, not too many do it, but you could also consider having one black mine over here and the other one just on the other side of the air defense. Mm -hmm. The reason being is that um, those dragon attacks are quite popular right now. And if you have your black mine spread out, the chances are higher of killing, actually, actually two, killing two, two different, different dragons, da dragons yeah. instead of just one. Yeah. So I'm actually becoming a big fan of having those spread out at least a little. I mean, having the best of both worlds, basically. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and once you've done that, consider uh, the black mine once again at the queen. I mean, is your air defense safe enough to sacrifice one black bomb? If so, move it towards the queen. That's my general rule. Yep. Okay, so um, any considerations no. as to queen walks? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, yeah. There's a lot of options I was looking at. I mean, the, the army camps. I, I started looking at obviously where the army camps are, <laughs> but there's there's a lot of value, and it's I know it's really difficult to plan uh, to defend against uh, queen charges and walks right now. But um, what kind of things do you see immediately? I mean, the first section I was looking at is this whole section. Yeah. Um, this is a relatively easy funnel. These two, and that would ensure your queen goes up. Takes out the enemy king, uh, takes out a lot of point defenses, and the healer should stay out of range of every single air defense. So that's another reason why I would recommend moving the, uh, them out a little a bit further. And one thing I was going to note about that side is there's not one building that's targetable for a queen walk that's going to stall her. Yeah. Right. I mean, even this dark elixir store is just out of range. Yeah, right? yeah. That was the first thing I'm like, oh, well, she's not. That's just kind of stopping core core units but nothing stops the queen walk because everything is is low hit points yep and the same story goes for the queen walk i talked about at the start from anywhere from this and i mean in that area i'm moving her down yeah um that actually has a lot of value i mean this sweeper prevents someone from coming in with this angle same with that air defense so that's very well placed um but then again the angle of this sweeper doesn't prevent too much so i would uh, move that sweeper to be honest um, so that that's another section uh, where a queen walk would get a lot of value. Yeah, I think so as well. But then again, uh, keep in mind, uh, defending versus queen walks is very difficult to do, especially a queen charge uh, combined with it. Um, so, you know, focus so on the the rest of the base first. That's yes, what I recommend. Yes, right. Focus on those core principles. Um, don't worry too too much about queen charges and walk because chances are, if you're a new like this uh, weight of a town hall nine is not going to be facing guys with you know 20, 20, 20 heroes probably 25, 25 okay. heroes. So you, you do have to. Oh, like I said, you, you really want to always think long term, but you also kind of need to tier your bases towards the types of wars you're getting. Right, so if, if you're not going to be facing a queen charge or queen walk, because most of the guys you're facing have level seven, eight, nine, ten queens that don't do them, then just focus on your hawks, focus on your lalo, and you'll have a lot of success. So, absolutely, absolutely. So overall, once again, um, good job on the base. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things uh, we mentioned right now, but uh, keep in mind these are quite high level uh, things uh, we're talking about. And, um, I mean, I can tell from the base, even though we commented a lot on it, um, you've got the idea. Yeah, it, it's there, right? So it just just keep learning. Um, maybe go back, watch, uh, rewatch a few of the base building videos, uh, specifically the hog pathing and defense, because uh, I think that's going to help you set up spring traps a lot uh, and, and, you know, move those air defense out. Uh, the two major videos... In my opinion, were that hog pathing and the Lalo defense, right? Because those yep. are the those are the most basic uh, town hall nine defense principles that you need to learn before you kind of expand on that. So absolutely, that, that would be our, our suggestion here. I think you know complete rework after you uh, take a peek at those videos, but uh, good effort overall. Definitely, and the most important one actually you forgot, which is the queen. I mean, if the queen isn't right, yes, none yes, of the base right. is right. You're so right. focus on that first. Absolutely. Yes. That is always step one. <laughs> yeah, I cannot forget that. Um, yeah, 
so uh should we wrap this thing up i think so all right well uh thanks for coming out my friends appreciate it you're welcome yeah no worries uh so that'll do it for your wisdom from wiser here just trying to help you bag that next tree star until then we're out